the earth 40 days, the waters increased above the ark, it rose high above the earth, and the waters were mighty. So what happened to the ark? It floated high above the earth. How do we, according to archaeology, get delivered of our nervousness, our anxiety, and our tension? If we know we're doing his will, we are to what? Take the ark of the kingdom and float it above the destruction of this world. Now how do we do that? How do we do that practically? How do I float my problems and relax in Yeshua's love, in Yeshua's arms, in Yeshua's comfort? How do I do that while the whole world's being damned and judged under me and beneath me? When the whole world is going to hell in a handbasket, how do I stay calm? When my children are, are, are ill, when, my, when my, uh, my relatives don't want to speak to me, when my own children, my own aunt and uncle reject me because I'm living Torah and obeying Yahshua, how do I stay afloat above the mountains of the earth, above the hell of the earth, the discouragement of the earth, the criticism of the earth, the ridicule of the earth, the drugs and narcotics of the gangs, of the cities, of the inner city on the earth. How do I float the kingdom principles so that I float above and get rid of the stress and the anxiety? Turn with me to Colossians. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Colossians. Colossians 3. Hallelujah. Someone's enjoying. Colossians 3. Colossians 3. If, verse 1, if you are raised with Moshiach, if you're raised into newness of life, seek the matters which are above, where Moshiach is seated at the right hand of Elohim. Mind the matters above, not on the earth, for you have died and your life has been hidden with Moshiach in Elohim. When Moshiach, who is our life, is manifested, then you will also be manifested with him in esteem. So what does it say? It says, if you are risen with Messiah, seek the things that are above. Seek the matters, the items, the principles that are above and not on the earth. Listen, in order to get away from the anxiety and stress of the earth, we're going to have to set our mind on things above where Moshiach is seated Amen. at the right hand of Yahweh. Moshiach, is this pleasing to you? Moshiach, is this good? Is this what you want me to do? Moshiach, is this where you want me to go? Moshiach, are these the commands, the, 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 the mitzvot that you want me to perform? See, you'd be so focused on what Moshiach wants for you that the anxiety and the stress, you float right above it. Yeah, the anxiety and the stress don't disappear. Hello? Mm -hmm. But you have to learn how to float, how to float archaeology, amen? Like Noah, float above the circumstance. How? How? You're risen with Moshiach. You're seated in heavenly places in Moshiach. Set your mind on things above. What does that mean? What does Yeshua want me to do? Where does Yeshua want me to go? Where does Yeshua want me to touch lives? You see, I'm, you're so consumed with Yeshua's heart and his desire that everything else doesn't matter. Yeah. Everything else pales in comparison. Yeah. Amen. Amen? Yeah. When we worry, what are we doing? We're focusing it on self. Yeah. And we're not allowing Yahweh to allow us to float while the earth is being destroyed. Amen? Amen. Now watch this. I love this. How many ready to get blown away again? Come on. Yeah. Hey, come on. This is blow away number, blow out number two. Uh -huh. Genesis, Beratius. 8.13. 8.13. When you're anxious and stressed out, learn how to float. <laughs> Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Right. Learn how to float. It came to be, Beratius 8.13, in the 601st year, in the first month. Hello? That's the month of? Aviv. Aviv. The first day of the month, here is New Year's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That the waters dried from the earth. Yeah. So on the real New Year of Yahweh's calendar, all the water 
was dry on the earth. But I want you to notice the surface was dry because he learned how to float in perilous times. Mm -hmm. And I want you to notice this took place in the 601st year of his life. When do the, the trials and the tribulations and the stress of life are, are all around you? Then seek the things that are above where Mashiach is seated at the right hand of Yahweh. For you are dead and your life is hid with Mashiach in Elohim. And so Noah took a one-year sabbatical. He finished working. He finished building. And while the world was being judged, for one year, he rested. He couldn't do much on the ark. There was no gymnasium, no treadmills, no handball courts. A man? What did he do? Nothing. Played with the animals. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. So what's the point? The point is, take your sabbatical float. Build his ark, and then when you finish doing his purpose, rest. Just relax. Just relax. But you got to do his purpose and float above your trials and tribulations. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Number 10. Back to Stay in Bereshus. Bereshus 6, 6, 22. We, we used the scripture before, and I want to use it again. Bereshus 6, 22. Noah did according to all Elohim commanded, so he did. The Titanic, how many remember a ship named by the name of the Titanic? Yeah. The Titanic was built by professionals. Correct? Yeah. What happened to the Titanic? Yeah. Hmm? So, the ark, Noah's ark, was built by an amateur. How many ships did Noah make before the, he built the ark? I don't think. None. <laughs> How many ships did Noah build after he built the ark? It was a one-time thing. Hello? When you're doing Yahweh's will, he may call you to do a one-time thing that you'll never do again, never did before, but for one time in your life, because you're being released of stress and anxiety and seeking the things of Yahweh above, because your life is hid with Moshiach in Elohim, mm -hmm. he may call you to do something that you've never done before and that you may never do again, but you've got to be spiritually fit and ready to hear the call. And when you do it, more than likely you and I will be amateurs, not professionals. The professionals who built the Titanic were not Torah keepers, were they? It is better to be an amateur who keeps Torah yeah. than a professional mm -hmm. who doesn't because if you don't follow his ways, your boat will sink, even though, it's, even though they said God couldn't sink that ship. Mm -hmm. They said God couldn't sink that ship. Mm -hmm. They were right. God couldn't, but Yahweh could. So Yahweh, what's the principle of archaeology? Yahweh uses amateurs. Who was Amos? Who was Amos? He said, Yahweh, you got the wrong man. I'm a husbandman. I'm a husbandman. I'm, I'm, I'm a vine dresser. I, I'm a man of agriculture and agrarian practice with my hands. I've never prophesied before. I've never been sent to declare, thus saith Yahweh, my say Yahweh, the burden of Yahweh. I've never done this before. Yahweh said, perfect just the one I'm looking for. Because people who get accustomed to doing religious things are religiously inclined. And when you're religiously inclined, you get religiously reclined. So Yahweh is looking for people who are non-professionals, but they're willing to follow the pattern and build the ark, restoring the two houses, the true name, and all the other truths, the Moadim, that Yahweh has called us to rebuild and restore the tabernacle of David, which has fallen. Listen, he is, you know who he's using to restore the tabernacle of David that has fallen? He's not using the professional clergy or the professional rabbinate. He is using street preachers and people who have very little etiquette, very little education, very little background, because they believe that there are two houses of Israel. They, they believe that the Father's name, Yahweh, is a seal of the children of Israel, and they have never done this before, but, but they are building the ark according to pattern, and they are classified by the fact that they are not professional. 
Yeah. Yahweh will restore the two houses of Israel yeah. through those who are not professionals, who have no preaching experience, who have no credentials and haven't graduated from a cemetery. I mean, seminary. If you've never done kingdom building and now you're doing it, Yahweh is looking for an amateur because when the amateur does what he's told to do, that boat will rise above the death, hell, and condemnation of this earth. Right. The professional will perish with the fire soon to be revealed. The amateur, the amateur builds the ark, not the professional. And we close with this, principle number 11. Beratius, <laughs> Beratius chapter 9. Beratius chapter 9, verse 11. <laughs> it's true, it's true, it's true. Beratius chapter 9. You gotta believe. Horatius chapter 9, <laughs> verse 13. Remember, remember, just because your parents were building a, 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 a religious system that you didn't understand doesn't mean they were right. Just because the Jewish people think that they are all Israel doesn't make them right. right. Now you are to build according to the pattern of the tabernacle of David, which Yahweh is showing you in these last days, and they will come into the ark and they will avert the judgment and the decree. Is anyone getting this? Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Wow. So if you're 600, you have no excuse. If you're not a professional, you have no excuse. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. If you have anxiety and stress, you have no excuse. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. You don't need to miss the boat. You can build the boat so others can get in. You don't need to miss the boat. If you build a boat, you will never miss the boat because you're building the boat according to his pattern. Amen. What am I saying? Restore the tabernacle of David that has fallen. Yeah. Maaseh Shlichim 15, 18 and 19, the prophets bear witness that the yeah. nations will return to Yahweh and rebuild the tabernacle of David which has fallen. Yeah. We are not to build the synagogue of the unsaved Jewish populace. We are not to build the church of no. Rome or her Protestant daughters. We are to rebuild the tabernacle of David, which has come tumbling down. Yahweh is looking for amateurs Amen. who have no religious tainting to do this work. Amen. 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 Oh, hallelujah. I'm talking to somebody this morning. Yes. Amen. Beratius 9, verse 13. Beratius 9, verse 13. And I shall set my rainbow in the cloud. <laughs> Where else are you going to find the rainbow? In the glory. In the glorious mission of archaeology. The rainbow is not for everybody. Everybody sees the rainbow, but the rainbow is for the sons and daughters of the covenant who build according to the pattern. Moshe built the, the, the uh, Mishkan according to the pattern. Shlomo built it according to the pattern. Noah built it according to the pattern. Watch this. I shall set my rainbow in the cloud, and it shall be the sign of the Noachic covenant between me and the earth. And it shall be when I will bring a cloud over the earth that the rainbow shall be seen in the cloud. I will remember my covenant with you, Noah, between me and you. Notice, the rainbow is not a nice thing for the human race, and everybody could look at the rainbow. Oh, isn't that pretty? The rainbow is a covenant sign for covenant people. And according to my Bible, Yeshua only has one bride, and that bride is Israel. Amen. The teaching that the church is the bride of Christ is an anti-Semitic teaching from the pit of hell. There cannot be two brides. There's one bride. They don't understand that they are Israel, so they think they're a different bride. <laughs> and they think that the rainbow is a beautiful thing for all of humanity, and all of humanity can enjoy the rainbow. Yeah, they can enjoy it visually. But the covenant of the rainbow, look what Yahweh said, Noah, come here. It's between me and you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's between me and you. That's a personal rainbow. Mm -hmm. Hello? Yes. For his people, Israel, mm -hmm. who are building the ark according to pattern. Oh, so others need not miss the boat. Yeah. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. And others, and notice, because you prepared ahead of time, Noah, you prepared ahead of time before it rained. Now watch this. Here's the covenant between me and you and every living creature of all flesh 
Never again will I destroy the waters, become a flood to destroy. The covenant was that the flesh of man would never again be destroyed by water. They were the beneficiaries, all flesh, listen, was the beneficiaries of the covenant. When you serve Yahweh, that rainbow sealing the covenant is between you and him. But all mankind be benefits. Hello? Everyone you bring into the ark, who is the ark? Yeshua. Yeshua HaMashiach will benefit from that covenant. And all flesh, all flesh will never again be wiped out by water because of one man's faithfulness. Amen? Be faithful. Remember, the storm is coming. But when, when the storm comes in your life, there's a rainbow between you and the Father. And that's his covenant to bring you out of the storm and into the clouds of glory. Father, we thank you and we praise you, Abba, for your goodness upon us this day. Karen, as you come forward. Tudaraba vinu malkeinu. Tudaraba vinu malkeinu. Father, we thank you for this lesson in archaeology that you have given us this day. And the principles, the principles that you have shared with us. Father, how to do the work in pairs for safety and protection. And how to plan ahead because the night is coming when no man can work. And how we should not miss the boat and stay physically fit. And Father, that you will always give us a rainbow even in the storms of life. We can count on the fact that there's a rainbow because we are in covenant relationship with you. And so, Father, all these lessons in archaeology that you have given us this day. For the renewed covenant in our hearts by the blood of the Lamb. Everyone standing, please. Everyone standing. Like our fathers had done Brows sweating from the heat of the sun And the salty air That damaged your skin We had a 